I get lucky, he'll fall off like trying to get to me. That can happen too. Just like that. <laughs> and the last... Nope, there's the last one. Wait, did that one survive? I didn't get souls. Okay, keep it in mind. That one survived somehow, which doesn't make sense because that was like an even further drop. It must have landed on something. The red sign soapstone, which is like worthless. I haven't seen one of these in the entire game. Online play item. Leave invasion sign. Hollows cannot use the item. So you have to be human? Be summoned to another world as a dark spirit and defeat the summoner to acquire humanity. Certain dark wraiths resist their descent into dark and persevere along the honorable path. The red sign soapstone is for them. This thing's worthless. Yeah, so if you're human, you can leave a uh, red sign. And it's basically like an invitation to duel. I guess it works if, like, uh, you're playing with a password and you're, like, intentionally trying to uh, have a battle with, like, one of your friends or something. Maybe that's its purpose. But for just, like, general use, it, there's really no reason to leave it versus using a uh, cracked red eye orb or the regular red eye orb. The regular red eye orb is one of the rewards for doing the dark race stuff for giving Kath humanity. I'm glad that didn't kill me. Yeah, but where do I go now? Also, can I see that, uh... Yeah, he must be the one that fell. I guess because he landed on the staircase, he survived. Doesn't look like I can get out. Also, I gotta find a way to get that item. It's, where is he? Did he fall again? He's even lower. Can I go around this? Yeah, I totally can. Cool. There he is. Got a drink. Got a drink. Uh, I tried to get a freaking dropping attack right there. And we're done. Alright, so there's that white fog. I don't think this door opens. I have to do a thing to get this to open. Oh yeah, so I guess you can circumvent uh, unlocking that door if you use the stupid dragon butt shortcut. So this leads you out right here. Man, if it wasn't obvious this was a Demon Souls level, it becomes obvious here. That thing right there around the statue is called the Phalanx. It is a unique enemy that only appears here. It is uh, it's a bunch of gross bodies that are in like the Spartan Phalanx formation of shield and spears. Which itself is a reference to like the first slash second boss of Demon Souls, which is called the Phalanx. Except these guys are actually way tougher, so I'm going to ignore them, actually. It's in my best interest to do so. Because right beyond this door is the start of the level. This is a shortcut from the very first bonfire. Only bonfire, actually, right there. So now if I screw up, I don't have to redo all that shit. Let's fight the phalanx! You don't want to hit their shield, you want to kind of break them up. Together they are strong, individually they are weak. Oh, gonna, oh i surprised I didn't hit the shield. They're also very quiet so they can sneak up on you. But thankfully they put these like iron stone cubes here for no reason. Which really screws up their plan. It's very kind from software to do this. You can see that they do a lot of damage though if they get you. So drink. Ah, I hit the shield. Just swipe. Kill that one. Only one to have to do this once. Unfortunately they come back. So if I die, they all respawn, which is really annoying. I kind of feel like they should have been a unique one-time death. Let's get rid of this guy. He's all by himself. Ooh, he 
you drop something. I don't know what they drop, actually. It is a spear that is not very special. Like, oh, it's their rare drop. This item that you can get at the beginning of the game. All right, there are a couple ways of doing this. Does this go? Where does this go? Well, I know where it goes, but it goes to one of two entry slash exits. Yeah, this is not the one I want. Fucking Christ. <laughs> well, that spoiled what's in there, didn't it? There are wheel skeletons in this level. A lot of them, too. I'm gonna do a plunging attack. Are you alive? No, you're dead. Well, that takes care of one of them. One of several. So let's just do this the other way. Should be an item somewhere over here, maybe? Here we go. This is a soul item. Wait, did I walk through that? I did. What the fuck? <laughs> Dark Souls. Dark Souls. I just did that grave have physics. Ah, crap. There is something else I gotta do in this area before I leave. Before I fight the boss. There's an NPC evasion in, uh, in this area. Can I open this or do I need a key? Son of a bitch. Great. Alright, I gotta go this way then. This is gonna be a trap. This feels like a big old trap. Behind me? Nope. Well, more of them. Really? Oh, there we go. That drops an item that I can pick up in a little while. Actually, let's just go do that. I want to say that's just a humanity, though. Don't feel like it's all that important. I could have gotten this earlier. You can shoot it down with a bow and arrow. Where did you come from? Yep, just the humanity. Alright, let's continue exploring over here. That's where we just were. So this is new. Yeah, here we go. This is the way down I was thinking of, not the well. The well I treat more as an exit than an entrance. Oh, uh, you can see him from here, shining the light on a wheel skeleton. Alright, you can see a bunch of them. Holy shit. Does that trigger other ones? Not clear. Looks like the answer is no. The guy on the far side didn't see us, so I'm going to drag you in here. And you're done. Take care of them as slowly as humanly possible. Don't trigger them. It'll make your life much easier. Alright, two down. Well, three. If we count that first one that I dropped in on. Alright, so there's two three. All right, now you're going to come for me. Oh, there's another one down there. This is like the slowest way to do this. But it's safe. I have wheel skeleton trauma. I have been like ground to dust by these guys so many times. 
they have cost me so many freaking minutes of my life in various Dark Souls games that I do not trust them at all. I think you're the last one. At least the last one in this big room. Like, look at that. Oh, he did a bunch of damage there. Ooh, I got him. Drink to be safe. So our target is actually this mechanism right here. Turn the handle. This statue is very peculiar. It's similar to the one we've seen around the game, but not quite. It's a mother and a child. There's some speculation as to what it represents, but I couldn't say for certain. We'll have to wait until the end of the level. This is the most obvious illusory wall ever. So we enter these dark tunnels. There's probably at least one other wheel skeleton in here, which is like the worst. Why would you ever want to fight them in these little hallways? There he, there he is, motherfucker. Got him. I think this might be the key that I need. Yep, the annex key. That opens that door. Another illusory wall. Another fucking wheel skeleton. Oh, he dodged me. Alright, let's go up here. So check it out. This is another one of these dudes, but he's not hostile. And I don't even remember whether or not he toxics if you kill him. Let's find out. I can lock on. Yeah, he does. What a bastard. But the reason he's here is because he drops this. A pyromancy fire surge. Where is that? All mixed up with my cool pyromancies. I passed it up. Fire surge. Pyromancy foreign to the great swamp. Create a surge of flame up from palm of hand. Not all pyromancy originates in the great swamp. One hears rumors of unknown pyromancers inhabiting various lands, and this spell is the work of one such outlander. Interesting. And the annex key, I doubt it says too much. Key to the annex in the painted world of Ariamis. In the wintry painted world, there is a structure resembling an old cathedral. Its annex serves as a type of storehouse. So back down into the dark, dank mercs. Somewhere around here, it's not this wall. Somewhere around here is that uh, ladder that leads out to where I originally dropped in and killed that wheel skeleton. Are you alive? No, you're the one. This is where I killed him. His wheel ended up lodged all the way up there. Make sure I didn't miss any like items or anything. I think I got it all. Cool. Took care of Bone Town USA down here in one try. That simplifies my life greatly. We still haven't died in the painted world, so nothing has revived. Alright, let's open this door. got more of these dudes. Eh, oh well. Good thing I have plenty of this stuff. This is breakable. This leads to that item we saw a while ago. This is Velka's Rapier. Now things start to become a little bit more clear about what this place could be. A 
a symbolic powerful thrusting sword used by the pardoner serving Velka. Goddess of Sin. It is no mere symbol to be sure. The pardoner is an inhuman swordsman and wields this enchanted blade with special sword technique. This thing is a thrust sword that scales with intelligence and dexterity. You need 16 dex and int to be able to use it. And it does uh, occult damage, dark damage. So Velka, the goddess of sin, um, who Oswald serves, the dude in the bell tower, the pardoner. Um, Velka is one of the strangest characters in Dark Souls lore. Because next to nothing is known about her. Presumably Velka was like a lord, I would say. Not human, obviously, a goddess. But Velka's time in like the Dark Souls universe came well before this game and ended. And not a lot's known about her. As I recall, like there was a time where maybe the last DLC of Dark Souls 3 was going to maybe say something to answer some questions, but I don't think it did. Because I haven't played it yet, and I haven't heard anything about that, so Velka becomes like one of the big question marks of the series. That disappoints a lot of longtime fans. You son of a bitch. Just get in here. That you can't get me. Drink. You gonna do it again? Well, that takes care of one problem. You can see there's some more up there. Look at that one run up against one of those uh, toxic dudes. So check it out. We got another like petrified quote unquote Andre. Another blacksmith like we found atop that one tower in the dark root garden. And this one's holding the dark ember. This lets you make occult weapons. Finally, we have the ability to do that. So the painted world seems to be like a... I don't know what to use, like what word to say. Not refuge, but... It seems to be a place where, like, Anna Rwando and the Lords there just kind of threw things that they didn't like, undesirables. So this place is almost kind of like a prison in a way. So the ember that makes weapons that kills gods, guess what? That gets thrown in here. Get that shit out of our faces. Son of a bitch. Ooh, that time I didn't get it. Alright, this is gonna be a pain. Or maybe not. Maybe maybe I took care of uh, the bird enemies. There's supposed to be a trick where they jump down onto this rooftop. But it must they must have been the ones in that tower there, so I killed them already. Ha ha ha! I get Vow of Silence for free, bitches! Secret Rite of the Black-Haired Witch Velka Prevents casting of magic within effect area Velka, the goddess of sin, is a rogue deity But she is versed in arts both new and old And is considered to have, have a great range of influence even as gods are concerned She's rogue So there's still that item, and I know exactly what it is. I just need to figure out how to get to it. It must be really close by. It's right here. This is the Mask of Elka, the Cleric Robe. This is Oswald's set. This is what he wears. Robe worn by partner serving Velka, the Goddess of Sin. The partner's attire is uniform, uniformly black in color and said to be imbued with Velka's mystical power, which provides a resistance against all manner of magic. Ooh, this one says something different. The partners listen to the confessions of sinners, urging reflection and salvation. Their masks symbolize separation from worldly desires. Yeah, so this place has like a strange connection to Velka. It's not really clear why. I mean, you got, like, Velka's supposed to be, like, symbolized by, like, a raven or a crow. Kind of like the thing that carries you to Lordran in the first place at the start of the game. 
whether or not that's in like supposed to be some sort of illusion or intentional not really clear but like yeah the the birds like her symbol she's super into it I'm gonna try to make this jump this works where am I now yeah I think I'm in a place I haven't been yet I think I'm in a place I haven't been yet or not there's still something alive in this building it's above me I can hear stuff moving around I think it's more rats how the heck do I get to them yeah the Velka stuff and like what the connection here is a little confusing though we can maybe make one last speculation based on what the boss of the area is it might provide some clues Oh, I never got this. That'll all be down in the main courtyard. I can still hear stuff moving around. How do I get to it? Do I have to fall through here? Is that the trick? Is this death? No, it looks like it's not. Alright, drink up. Where does this lead out from? Killed the two rats. There are a bunch of rats in here. Oh, they do toxic damage. That must be why they're white. Regular rats only do poison. Slow poisoning. Where does this staircase lead out of? God, there's even more of them. Damn it, that's so dumb. This is for the purpose of getting that item, which I, I don't know what that item is. Oh, the freaking barrel was in my way. Okay, I should be able to do it now. There we go. What is this? It's a gold coin. Well, that also raises some questions about what this area is. That suggests that some of the foreign warriors got thrown into this place. Okay, whose face is on this one again? I can't remember. Pass it up. No, I didn't. It's at the bottom. Okay, so this one is Allfather Lloyd, who I believe is the head of the Way of White. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there is some signs that uh, people who were um, like some... The warriors who came from other lands to seek out Anarondo and do the trials and whatnot. There's some suggestions that they uh, also wound up here at this place. So some people did make it. Some people did brave Sin's Fortress and make it into Anarondo like, uh, like Tarkus did. Alright, let's go back to the start. I want to pick up that item that I cut down. I think this is the quickest way to do that. I also didn't get that one, so I need to get that too. This has been a pretty efficient cut through uh, the painted world, though, if I may say so. We've hit all the major points. Whoops, I need to go this way through the main front door. And my two items should be here on the left. Then we will see uh, the path leading to the exit. Though I won't go fight the boss just yet. Humanity. And... What are you? You're a ring of sacrifice, huh? Let's internalize what this statue looks like. It's a child holding its mother, it looks like. Yeah, so this is the door we opened with the contraption. It moves that statue. And this is leading out. This is, uh, we're underneath, uh, Dragon Bridge. And the, uh, the trick to this place is that there are hollows around. They, like, hide them inside corners. There they are. Whoops, didn't mean to get hit by that. This is dumb.
There they are. Let's see, I remember there being like a trap with a lot of these guys. And there's the final thing stopping you. One of the, uh, Berenice Knights. So he made it in. Despite the fact that, uh, supposedly these guys weren't supposed to make it, he made it in. Maybe he was part of, like, Tarkus's exploration group. And Tarkus fell off the rafters, but he made his way inside the painting itself. And went hollow. Also, like, uh... Like that one guy at Sin's Fortress, he respawns every time. And I think he almost like always drops a large Titanite shard, maybe. It's about to Estus on me. Yep, large Titanite shard. Well, that does it for the painted world. The end of the area is through that door. But let's go back to the bonfire. For one, I'm down to one Estus. But there's also uh, one other really cool thing to see here at the Painted World. So, let's sit down. Let's level up. Let's go with a point into faith. And let's reverse my hollowing. Hopefully I don't get invaded by a human right away. I haven't been seeing a lot of messages in this area, so it doesn't seem to be too active. Maybe some new players are having trouble finding it. Also, um, the time of day that I'm playing at might play a factor. It's pretty late at night. Let's see that the Phalanx is back. There's one area we haven't been to, and it's over here to the right. And I wanted to be human before I came in here. This is where our NPC invasion will occur. Gotta get these hollows out of the way first. Otherwise, they'll just be a nuisance. Let's pick this up. Soul item. Might be some more good stuff hitting, hidden over on like the perimeters. See, there are a lot of hollows like planted up on pikes. Also, I don't know how clear it is. I will, uh, let me pause right here and I will turn up the uh, audio mix. There's like really creepy noises going on. And I know it's a thing too. It's like noted, I believe on like, uh, this location's wiki page. I've read it before that like you can hear strange noises from this location and I don't know why. It's just a weird detail they added in. Where is our NPC invasion? It should be happening. There it goes. Dark Spirit King Jeremiah. Jeremiah is like a king from a foreign land that's not really well explained. But the truth is, look at his dumb goofy set. The truth is that he's just a big Demon Souls reference. Oh, is he going to do Firestorm? What is this? Yeah, that's Firestorm, all right. He's got kick-ass pyromancies. Oh, shit. That does a lot of damage. So drink. This guy is a goofy motherfucker. He was using a whip weapon that does bleed damage. That's all he's got. Pick up some humanity, and there's the notched whip. This might be the only whip weapon in the game, I'm not sure. The notched whip. Whip with sharp spikes. Only slightly effective against armor and tough scales, but quite formidable against enemies with exposed skin. Also causes heavy bleeding. So there you have it. I'm going to use another Homeward Bone and go back to the bonfire. I will get my one Estus back. And then we make a sprint towards the exit. Oh, I'm actually at six now. Might have gotten two for just beating him. Maybe that's what happened. I just take care of these guys, otherwise they'll be an annoyance. 
So let me think about what the best way out of here actually is. I think I want to go through here. Ignore the phalanx. Hopefully I don't get a spear on my butt. And we want to climb up this structure. And we want to make it onto Dragon Bridge and use the faux shortcut. So let's cut through here. I think this leads to where I want to be. Yeah, here we go. So doing this lets me bypass most of the hollows on the underside. And I'll be able to more or less run through our knight friend. Whoops. There we go. So when I jump down here, I'm going to aim for this pillar on the right. But its physics aren't exactly normal to let you know that this is not intended. I should be floating above it. Nope, I didn't go far enough. Whoops. Well, let's just run. Uh, arrow in my back. Got some summon signs. This is a human sun bro who's wearing Lawtrek stuff. That's not actually Lawtrek. Knight, are you going to back up all the way over here? Yeah, you are. I just get rid of this guy. Normally, I'd be able to uh, just run into the boss door, but I actually want to like stop and take a breather at this location. There we go. You son of a bitch. All right, I'm good. So next time, we head through that fog door and see what's at the end of the painted world.